Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at the moment about either the x, the y, or the z axis. How do we calculate that? Again, there is a force acting on a particle at some arbitrary point. That particle will be at a distance r away from the origin and it will be acted upon by some force that could be any direction. And we know that the moment about any arbitrary axis is going to be any arbitrary axis from the origin to some point in space, OL, is going to be equal to the dot product or the scalar product of the unit vector along that axis times the cross product of the position vector and the force acting on the particle. But now imagine that the axis is the x-axis. So that means that we're finding the moment about the point from the origin to the x-axis. Remember that the unit vector in the direction of the x-axis will only have a component in the x-direction and will have a zero component in the y or the z-direction which means that this matrix right here then will become the following. So that means that this will be a 1 and those two will be zeros and then the matrix will look like this. This is going to be equal to um, lambda sub x which is really a 1, right? That only be the component in the x direction. That will be the only component that has any magnitude times the cross product of r cross f. And so this is then going to be equal to 1, 0, 0 r sub x, r sub y, r sub z, and this is going to be f sub x, f sub y, and f sub z. And since those two are zeros, we're only going to have the following result. This is going to be equal to 1 times r y times f sub z, r sub y times f sub z minus r sub z times f sub y, r sub z times f sub y. And if we want to find the moment about the y-axis, this is going to be only the component in the y-direction, which is going to be 1. The components in the x and the z-direction are going to be 0, multiplied via a, a via scalar product times r cross f. So this is going to be equal to the matrix of 0, 1, 0, r sub x, r sub y, r sub z, f sub x, f sub y, f sub z, and so this is going to be equal to, of course, remember that the signs alternate, so this is going to be minus 1, minus 1 times r sub x times f sub z, r sub x times f sub z, minus r sub z times f sub x, r sub z times f sub x. And then if we apply this minus in here, then this will become r sub z, f sub x, minus r sub x, f sub z. And in the same way, we can find the moment about the z-axis, and then of course we'll have a 1 over here, and we do the same thing, so then we can say that the moment about the z-axis will be equal to the component only along the z-direction, multiplied via a scalar product times r cross f, and so this is going to be equal to, it'll be a 1 over here, zeros everywhere else, so it'll be 1 times r sub x times f sub y, r sub x times f sub y, minus r sub y times x sub f sub x, r sub y times f sub x. And that's how we find the moment about the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis in each case. And that's how it's done.